Okay, uh, welcome everyone. Uh, so today uh, we'll go through a journey of of looking at async await through a lens of combine. Uh, a quick raise of hands: Who all are using combine right now in your production apps? Almost everyone. And are you guys thinking of moving away from combine into async await? Some of you, right? Okay, amazing. Then this talk might be helpful where you can think of and take it as a takeaway. You can think of you know if you have a combined base code base and you want to switch to async await, then is really async await capable of? So we'll, look at, we'll, we'll take a look at the pros and cons and whether we have the same feature capability in async await which Combine already offers you. Uh, quick intro about me. Hi, I'm Mitesh. Uh, I've been an iOS engineer for almost 10 years now. Uh, I do play with Android as well, maybe Kotlin multi-platform. Um, if Twitter is still a thing, you can find me there. Um, or Mastodon. And I tend to write some few blogs here and there on my own blog post. Cool, moving on. About four years back, you know, uh, I, 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 I gave a talk on, on Combine where we talked about the promise of Combine. Because at that time, everybody was jumping to the bandwagon of Combine and how cool reactive programming is all about. And finally, we got a first party solution, right? And this is the talk that I gave. I built a quick networking library uh, using Combine and showcase the power of operators, flat maps, try catches, you know, all those complex things. But here we are, four years down the line, and we think that, hey, async await might be cool, right? Maybe async await is the future, you know? So before we look at the async await and whether it can pull off those features or not, we'll understand Combine a bit and how thinking happens in Combine. So what is combined? Combined is essentially a stream of events. Those events could be values or errors. So combined always had this idea of breaking the channel or breaking the pipeline where we deal with values separately and we deal with errors separately as well. And in this process, it is with combined, you can transform the values using some cool operators like map or you can also combine multiple streams. That's where you got the more power. So if you have multiple streams coming in from a lot of places, you can combine those uh, events in our streams and then can do something more powerful with that, like combine later, zip, uh, debounce, et cetera. Then combine also had threading in built into it, so you can switch threads using subscribe on, receive on, all those things. And it also had typed error handling, and there was a plus over, let's say, Rx, which didn't have. And and when you have type error handling, your, your caller know that what kind of error am I going to deal with, right? So you have more type safety. And that was a good thing about combined. I've written almost because you also have a try catch operator which reduces things, but yeah. And finally we had combined, we had cancellation feature as well, right? Uh, which was a bit of improvement over GCD. So if combined is so great, right? Like uh, does async await even stand a chance? Like why do we give it a shot? Uh, because combine might have some drawbacks. I mean, if you look at combined code, it has a lot of boilerplate stuff to it, right? Uh, when it makes a complex problem simpler, it, it tend to make simple problem a little harder to solve, maybe. Of course, that leads to a little higher learning curve. And when you work with combine, you know that you're working with combine, right? Your code is filled with combine publishers, subscribers, operators, everywhere you see, you see combine. And that's why we are here now, 24, where we want to see the promise of async await. Let's see how far we can take async await in this journey. Async await. So async await, I know, so we won't talk about the concurrency aspects in this talk, but rather we'll look at the lens through combine, how async await can think of combine the way we're thinking in combine. So first thing first, it simplifies async programming for us, right? Uh, it, uh, we can also have streams of values in com using async await via some APIs like async sequence and async stream. We'll look at them later on. Then it also revolves around a new congruency model, which we have a talk tomorrow uh, to, to, to deep dive deeper around actors and tasks. And then it also has this very in-house error handling via try catch, which we all are familiar with. And finally, it also gives you cancellation via task API. So moving on with what is what what async await really solves. So we all have seen this code, right? It's a simple callback, which you have three properties and you have data, response, and error, all three at one point. And then you have the combined version of that, right? Suddenly you can see a lot of more code you have written. We now need to know what is the publisher, we need to know what is sync, we need to know what is subscriber, what is completion, you know, a lot of information is thrown in this code. But it simplifies things like it, it actually breaks your value in a separate callback and error into a separate callback, which is a plus. 
And finally, we can cancel things at the well at the end. And this is what the simple, this is what the uh, analogous async await code look like, right? So one line of code, you can just you know read the data back, and then you can do a try catch, which is a familiar pattern in Swift already. Right? Moving on to streams of values. Combine is famous for its own publisher pattern, right? Publisher is used to send values. Uh, subscriber will listen to the values. And operator play in the middle, which can transform the values from A to B. And this is a typical combined code. We have a publisher, and then followed by some operator like filter, map, and then finally you can listen to it, and then store in a cancelable to cancel things further. Async await solve the same problem via this API called async sequence and a followed counter protocol called iterator, iterator protocol. So iterator protocol is a protocol which you know, allows you to bring the next value, and once you have the next value, async sequence uses the iterator to get the next value and display it on the screen. And if async sequence is a very low level API for you, you can actually go on and use async stream. Async stream is a high level API, which, use, which you know, is confirms to async sequence protocol, but can help you make async stream very, very easy. And it also has a counter protocol or a type with a throwing sequence. And finally, if you're too lazy to make streams or sequences, you can actually rely on async publisher. It's a helper which given by Apple, which converts any publisher to an async sequence. Async sequence. So async sequence is a type that provides asynchronous sequential iterated access to its elements, right? We, have, we all have seen the sequence, right? Simple code, we are moving from zero to 10, and then in a for loop, we can listen to the values. And the same sequence has the power of actually applying the filters, map, et cetera, right? What if, in the same sequence, we can also add a extension which can give you an async version of that? So now we are from a sequential world, we are moving to an async world, but if you look at the below, it's still using a for loop, and that's the uh, comfort that we get with async await. We, have, we can still use the same for loop, but with a new keyword called await, and with the await keyword, we can actually go on and listen to the values. But the values are async now, which means that it'll, it might take a couple of seconds to get back the value. And async sequence gets the same sequence operators as well, like fil filters, map, flat map, all those things. And the for loop remains the same. And if you're curious how you can make an async version on a sequence, it's a simple helper that you can use. And this gives you a good segue of understanding what is an async stream is, right? And if you want, and you want to make write this code, you can actually import a new library by Apple called async algorithms that you can simply import in your projects and you'll have an async version over there as well. But if you're looking at this code, what we are doing is we are, we are taking a look at async stream and then the stream, we are looping over the sequence and then yielding the value. And once we are done, we are finishing it as, as well at the end. And that takes the next step, what is, what is async stream? And what is its powers? So async stream confirms to this protocol called async sequence, and it provides you a convenient way to make a new stream, right? So you, when, you, when you want to make a new stream on the fly, you can use async stream API for that. And that allows you not to use any, any protocols other than that. There are two flavors of async stream, right? One flavor of async stream is you get a continuation. When you see continuation, think about promise, think about futures, right? Futures had a thing called promise, which gives you value in the future. So similarly, async stream has the same concept and it's called continuation. So continuation will, will yield the value in the future, and then you can also finish it as well with error or no error. And let's say you don't want to deal with continuation, you can also pass a, another async function to an async stream as well. For example, if you have an API call called data uh, on, a, on a UL session, and you can actually wrap that one-time event thing into a stream as well. Because one-time data have a different API, but stream has a different API. And this is a typical construct of a continuation if you want to use async stream. It gives you a callback, which, and you get a continuation, and then you can use it. For example, in this case, the continuation, you can just yield on a value, and then you can finish at the end if you want to. And as far as the consuming is concerned, we are again using the same for loop that we used it in the other examples. And the other flavor of async stream, which is not a continuation, is using a callback for async function. So in this callback, you can actually return an async function or a non-async function as well. And when you want to finish it, just pass a nil value. And like in this case, I'm not using any continuation, I'm just passing a random value. And let's say if I want to finish it, I can just pass a nil value to it. 
a lot simpler and a lot cleaner. A same, similar example for another async version on that. And mind this, in this case, I'm using an async stream because it cannot throw, but it also has a nice throwing API as well called async throwing stream. And this allows you to throw value as well or throw errors as well, which you can catch when you want to. Last, last thing is the async publisher in this async stream journey. Async publisher is a publisher which exposes this element as async sequence. This is what Apple says on their uh, documentation, but I slightly disagree. Uh, async publisher is actually not a publisher because it doesn't conform to a publisher protocol. It actually conforms to an async protocol, async sequence protocol. So async sequence, so async publisher is essentially a sequence protocol, async sequence protocol, which exposes the element and as an async sequence. A simple example would be this, where you have a publisher at the end, like a pass through subject, and then you can make an async publisher, and then you can pass the same publisher you want to convert to an async version of it, and then listen to the same callback like you, you have been using with the for await, for await criteria. And then when the publisher fires the value, you can also listen to the same way as well. So this is a good bridge between uh, a combined and an async world if you are in that transition phase. So we know that async await can also produce streams, right? But streams are, are cool, right? But what about stream or streams, you know? And what, what, what I mean by this is that in, in combined world, we could also combine multiple streams into make one common stream. For example, let's say if you have a screen which has three buttons or three checkboxes, and you want to, have any, and you have an enable button at the bottom. You want to enable the button when you have received all the tab from all the buttons, right? So you can actually merge all the signals from all the button and then combine the enable property of the, of the final enable button. So, and that's one example. Another example would be debounce. We all know that we don't want to spam our, our backend with, with search events all the time, search API call. So we use debounce to delay the search when we, and we have enough key strings. So all those extra functionality is, is we combine is, is already famous for. So can async await deliver those functionality or not? So as I said, combined had that features like merge, combine letters, zip. Those were the powers of combined, which made really combined famous or reactive in library in general. And, and not only they combine multiple stream, but they also modify the behavior via debounce, throttle, or delay. And this is a typical example of, of those complex operators via merge, combine letters, and zip. But what about async await, right? Combine can do all that stuff, but can async await? Turns out it doesn't, or like, uh, it doesn't do out of the box for you. You don't have a, like a, it's, it's not part of standard library as such, but you can actually import this library called async algorithms. It is by Apple again. And this, uh, this, this, uh, this uh, SPM package gives you all the goodies which we have been lacking in the, in the standard library. For example, it has a chain operator, combine letters, merge, zip, and that really adds the power of async await. So if you're thinking of adding async await and you're missing those combined operators or functions, think about importing this library. It's not part of the library, a standard library, but you have to import it separately. And like any other combined API or combined code, you can actually go on and write a similar code like that. They all look similar, by the way. So you can do merge, combine later, zip, debounce, throttle, and they work the same way the combined used to work. So again, async await can do all those combined goodies that combine was famous for. Right? Now, uh, now async awaits, when you use merge or combine letters or zip, they have this limitation of only able to pass three streams. If you want to add a fourth stream, you have to actually combine them in a tuple as well. So this, this proposal got accepted of generic variadics. So I'm hoping that soon we'll, we'll be able to add like a list of operators or list of streams in, in those merge operators as well. I think once we know that, so far we have been talking a lot about values, right? We can, 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 we, can we pass a value? Can we modify a value? Can we merge multiple value streams or not? But what about error handling? Error handling plays an equally important part when it comes to making a screen, right? Now, in both the frameworks, whether it's combine or async await, errors are always a terminal event. They always attach to a terminal uh, enum or, or a completion enum, and they always signify that your stream is gonna end. So that's something to keep in mind. In combine, we have a separate channel to handle things, right? Similarly, in async await, we have a catch block that you can handle errors. We'll take a look at the example. 
Combine had this extra feature of strongly typed errors. So Combine gave you the, in Combine, every, if you look at any API, they always have two parameters, one for value, one for error. And that error parameter always allowed you to type safely, you know, manage your error handling. But that's not the case with async await. Async await has a catch block and that type erases things for you. But we'll take a look at examples where you can come kind of, you know, uh, go about that. Then combine gave you some special operators like map error, catch error. These are dedicated error handling operators which made error handling way easier. So if you had an error that you want to catch and want to return a, like a default value, you can catch them as part of your pipeline. But in case of async await, we'll see we have to catch them in a, in a catch block and then again do something else. So it kind of breaks the flow a bit, but that's what async await is. And finally, yeah, this context switching which combined had, right? It was able to catch errors and again, you know, move from value to an error stream and error to a value stream depending on what kind of operators you want to use. So a typical combined code which you have a publisher and then you can listen to the values. Uh, and the first callback is the callback which gives you an error callback. And as you can see, I can type safely say it's a URL error callback and then a parts part of completion as well. But if you look at, if you look at a async await code, uh, you have to catch it, and this catch block type erases all your errors, so it kind of not so good, right? And that's a simple example, but a real example looks like this, where you actually can have multiple errors throwing, right? You can throw a URL error, you can throw an API error, you can throw a decoding error, or you can even throw something else, right? So a real code looks like this. We have multiple errors going on. And if you look at the signature at the top level, it's an async throw. So it only throws your error, but you don't know what it is throwing. So basically what we can recommend is that rather than throwing any kind of error, it's a good practice to maybe converge all those errors into one common error, and that common error could be, let's say, API error. So now I'm catching a decoding error in my, in my upper block. I'm also catching a URL error. I'm also catching you know, some other errors as well. And then I'm converging that those different kind of errors into one common error model. And that will make the call side a little more predictable, right? Otherwise, I'm, I'm open to accept any kind of error. And once you have that, this is what a call, like, call set looks like, where you can simply you know, get the response, or wait for the response, and then catch, and do all the catch stuff. And when you expand the catch, now if you look at my catch, it looks a lot cleaner, where I can actually just think about dealing with API errors, and I don't have to worry about URL separately, or decoding separately, or any other separately. I just have to, I just have to focus about the API errors. And luckily, another proposal got accepted, this is uh, type throws. And type throws will be available soon, I guess. And this will make the scenario a bit, bit better, I guess, where you can actually, you can attach a type with a throwing as well. And every function can has the capability now to attach a type or a failure with the throw as well. And that will make the call set a bit better. So I'm waiting for this to come. And once you have that, I think async await will be slightly more closer to combine as well. And lastly, Combine had these amazing operators, as I mentioned, map error, which transformed A to B from error perspective. Then you have try catch, which converts error into a new publisher altogether. And then you have a catch, which is a, which is a non throwable version of that. But we don't have these functions in Swift in, in async await yet, because if you look at map error, in, in async await, everything is type erased. So map error might not make sense from the caller point of view, right? Um, and then again, you don't have other, any other uh, functions either. So yeah, async await is kind of lacks those complex operators which, which combine already had those. But if you're curious enough, you can actually make your own version. In this case, uh, it's a simple map error extension on async sequence, which, o which iterates over your current values and it catches and then applies the transformation, right? Even though the output or the, the final result is still an error protocol, but in a way you can actually transform your errors and write your extension like this. It's not part of the uh, async uh, algorithms library, which is by Apple, uh, but you can make these extensions and you know, uh, improve your code base. Cancellation. I think cancellation is a very important part because you, you, you want to cancel things because th things are long, uh, they take time to process. Uh, so in combine, you had a simple cancelable at the top and which you can cancel when you want to. Let's say view did disappear or in, in DNS callbacks. 
Similarly, in async await, if you wrap any code, any async code in a task API, uh, then the task, you can retain the task, and the task is cancelable, uh, which you can cancel later on, depending on your use case. Now, async await revolves around a concept of structured concurrency, uh, which tells you that the task cancellation triggers on the tree as well. So if your parent call cancels, your child task will also cancel as well, and that's an extra benefit you get out of the box for if using async await. And then you have some helpers like task is canceled. So if you have any, so you can check in your async await logic if cancellation is in progress or not. Uh, and if it's canceled, then you might not want to do more awaits that you that you don't want to. And it also has a different variation called check cancellation, which is a throwable type. So if if you want to check and you want to throw the error back up to the parent, you can throw this error and somebody can catch it to make some extra processing, maybe logging or sending some logs where you want to. So async await looks great, right? And it, it, it gives you a lot of things out of the box, but there's a but at the end because it, we don't get chaining in async await, right? We don't get type errors yet. We don't have operators. We don't have uh, context switching which, which combine gave you. So there are a lot of missing elements right now in async await, which might be a deal breaker if you're coming from combined thinking, but it gets a job done if you can wrap your code around in a proper way where you can have, let's say, you can converge those errors into a common error or you can chain things as well, uh, depending on you know, your API. And you can also use result types as well. And result types can uplift the, you know, uh, the throwing capability, which we which async await already has. And in, in result, you can attach a type safe error as well. So rather than throwing an async await, async await can simply return a value, and value could be a result. So it's not it's just a non-throwing function, but you can attach some error handling, custom error handling if you want to. Yeah, thank you. Awesome, thanks for that, Ritesh. Uh, we have a bit of time. Does anyone have any questions? Uh, is Q&A a thing we can do? Sure. Yep, okay. Yeah. Anyone got any questions? <laughs> So we do. I'll be the mic runner. All right, Amy's got a question. Hey, Ritesh. Thanks for an awesome talk. Um, question, do you think there are still going to be situations where Combine is going to provide a more compassionate, a more powerful um, way of coding than async and structured concurrency? Uh, right now, if you look at the error handling aspects of, of async await, as I mentioned in the last couple of slides, they do lack the, the complexity which Combine gave you. Like those error handling, like map errors, try catch, those were really complex tools which made harder problems a lot simpler. Right? So we have to build those capability in async await yourself. And uh, as I said, async await doesn't have type errors, so that's also a limitation. Right? Uh, but async await is a plus on, on structured concurrency because it's built around that. So let's say cancellation becomes a lot easier and predictable. So if you cancel something, it can trickle down as well. But that's not a case with combined because you have separate events happening here and there. So yeah, on and off, they both have those pros and cons. Uh, and yeah, you have to pick what works for you. But yeah, I think async await is in a better direction. All it needs is some new tools, which is already in the pipeline, as we saw a couple of proposals are coming in and getting merged. So looking forward to those, and let's see where it goes. Hi Ritesh, nice talk. Uh, so I have uh, more of a different type of question. So as we can already see, uh, there are a lot of repetitions, right, uh, between those two frameworks. Do you have any predictions based on Apple support? Like as developers, we're thinking about uh, writing code that will last long, uh, right? Uh, we've been making changes into SwiftUI since like five years now. So uh, do you have any kind of predictions or suggestions based on that? Uh, so I'm afraid I don't have predictions as such, but uh, if your question is more like, can we bridge between them? Uh, or like, let's say a code that you write right now might not need an update, let's say a couple of years down the line, if that's a question, then I mean, right now it's a transition phase where there are APIs which bridge combine and async await. So if we so if you use those, then at least we know that you know your your code gonna last at least for a couple of years. Um, but if you go all in async await. I'm sure async is gonna stay here, right? Because the entire concurrency is built around it. So I don't see it going as soon as a combined maybe. Uh, because you have task APIs, you have other things, right? So more or less, I feel that you know my bets would be more on async await than combined. Oh, yep, 
Here's one here. Hey, uh, thank you for uh, talk. Uh, I'm not using really combine. I'm using Rig Swift, which is really similar to it. There was, uh, I would say, minor differences. Um, so, and we in my team in uh, Nerd Security also considering uh, one day to move from Rig Swift. Uh, and I noticed uh, that uh, in Rig Swift we have uh, subscribe on and uh, observe on operators, and uh, your talk uh, didn't cover it. Maybe I'm not that familiar with uh, async await, and it's kind uh, kind of covered out of the box. So, uh, is it async await uh, covers this topic as well? Yes. Uh, so. Uh, yeah. Uh, so uh, similar to Ari Swift or Rx Swift, even Combine had those subscribe on, we had things like sync, right? We had assign. So similar to, so basically you're talking about observing values, right? So observing values in async await is similar to a sequence world. So in sequence world, we use for loops. Similarly, in async world as well, async, async sequence is nothing but a sequence which made, made, which have been made async version. So everything that you had sync, everything, every API that you had available for sequence, same API is available for async sequence as well. So for, for async sequence, you have to use a for loop. So it's like a, rather than saying for i in, in, in sequence, we say for await i in sequence. So the for loop becomes await, yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, so um, this talk doesn't cover about that. Uh, we can talk about it after the talk as well. Uh, so that's fine. <laughs> 